Internal Revenue Service IRS News. Overview of COVID-19 related tax credits for small and mid-sized businesses. The Families First Coronavirus Response Act, the FFCRA, signed by President Trump on March 18, 2020, provides small and mid-sized employers refundable tax credits that reimburse them dollar for dollar for the cost of providing paid sick and family leave wages to their employees for leave related to COVID-19. The FFCRA gives businesses with fewer than 500 employees referred to throughout these frequently asked questions as eligible employers funds to provide employees with paid sick and family medical leave for reasons related to COVID-19, either for the employee's own health needs or to care for family members. Workers may receive up to 80 hours of paid sick leave for their own health needs or to care for others, and up to an additional 10 weeks of paid family leave to care for a child whose school or place of care is closed or child care provider is closed or unavailable due to COVID-19 precautions. The FFCRA covers the costs of this paid leave by providing small businesses with refundable tax credits. Certain self-employed individuals in similar circumstances are entitled to similar credits. For a more detailed overview of the law, see Overview of COVID-19 Related Tax Credits for Small and Mid-Sized Businesses below. For Frequently Asked Questions, see Basic Frequently Asked Questions FAQs and the section that follow. The FAQs will be updated uh, to address changes in the law or additional questions as they are raised. The FFCRA requires employers to provide paid leave through two separate provisions. One, the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act, that's the EPSLA, which entitles workers to up to 80 hours of paid sick time when they are unable to work for certain reasons related to COVID-19. And two, the Emergency Family and Medical Leave Expansions Act, expanded FMLA, which entitles workers to certain paid family and medical leave. The FFCRA provides that employers subject to the EPSLA and the expanded FMLA paid leave requirements are entitled to fully refundable tax credits to cover the cost of the leave required to be paid for these periods of time during which employees are unable to work, which for purposes of these rules includes uh, telework. Certain self-employed persons in similar circumstances are entitled to similar credits. The following section provides an overview of FFCRA's refundable tax credit provisions and the frequently asked questions that follow, that follow provide more detailed information regarding the requirements, limitations, and application for the paid leave credit. Uh, the wage and hour provision of the Department of Labor, DOL, that administers the EPSLA and the expanded FMLA and has posted frequently asked questions and related information about paid leave requirements at the Department of Labor's Families First Coronavirus Response Act. And you have a link to that here. I'll post a link to this in the description. Eligible employers are entitled to refundable tax credits for required sick leave wages and qualified family leave wages, collectively qualified leave wages. Under Section 7001 and 7003 of the FFCRA, res respectively, these tax credits are increased by the Qualified Health Plan expenses all all uh, <laughs> allocable to and the eligible employer's share of Medicare tax on the, the qualified leave wages. Eligible employers are businesses and tax-exempt organizations with fewer than 500 employees that are required to provide sick leave uh, under the, the F the EPSLA and provide paid family leave under the expanded FMLA. Note that although the FFCRA requires most government employee employers to provide paid leave, it does not entitle those governmental employers to tax credits for these this leave. For more information about eligible employers, see what employers may uh, claim the tax credits. There's a link to that below. I'll provide a link to this in the description. Under Section 7002 and 7004 of the FFCRA, self-employed individuals are entitled to equivalent credits based on similar circumstances in which the individual is unable to work. For more information about self-employed individuals can claim the credit, see specific provisions related to self-employed individuals. Link to that here. We'll provide a link to this in the description.
The refundable tax credits apply to qualified sick leave wages and qualified family leave wages paid for certain periods when an employee is unable to work as described below during the period beginning April 1, 2020 and ending December 31, 2020. The same period is used to determine credits for qualified sick leave equivalent amounts and qualified family leave equivalent amounts for certain self-employed individuals. Overview of paid sick leave refundable credits. So this is the overview. The EPSLA requires eligible employers to provide employees with sick uh, leave if the employee is unable to work, including telework, due to any of the following. One, employee is under federal, state, or local quarantine or isolation under related to COVID-19. Two, employee has been advised by a healthcare provider to self-quarantine due to certain uh, re related to COVID-19. Three, the employee is experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 and seeking a medical diagno diagnosis. Four, the employee is caring for an individual who is subject to a federal, state, or local quarantine or isolation under related to COVID-19 or has been advised by a health care provider to self-quarantine due to concerns related to COVID-19. Five, the employee is caring for the child of such employee of the school or place of care of the child has been closed or the child care provider has such child uh, is unavailable due to COVID-19 uh, precautions. Six, the employee is experiencing any other substantially similar condition specified by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. An employee is unable to work for reasons due to a COVID-19 circumstance described in one, two, or three above is entitled to paid sick leave for up to two weeks, up to 80 hours at the employee's uh, regular rate of pay, or if higher, the federal minimum wage or any applicable state or local minimum wage up to $511 per day and $5,110 in the aggregate. The more information, see what is the rate of pay for qualified sick leave wages if an employee is unable to work due to their own health needs. And there's a link to that here. An employee who is unable to work due to a COVID-19 circumstance described in 4, 5, or 6 above is entitled to paid sick leave for up to two weeks, up to 80 hours at uh, two-thirds the employee's regular rate of pay or if higher the federal minimum wage or any applicable state or local minimum wage up to $200 per day and $2,000 in the aggregate. For more information, you can see the link here. The eligible employer is entitled to a fully refundable uh, tax credit equal to the required sick leave. So that's the key point here. The eligible employer is entitled to a refundable tax credit equal to the required paid sick leave. The tax credit is uh, also includes eligible employer share of Medicare tax imposed on those wages and its all allocable costs of maintaining health insurance coverage for the employee during the sick leave period qualified uh, health plan expenses. The eligible uh, employer is not subject to the employer portion of social security tax imposed on those wages. Eligible employers subject to the Railroad Retirement Tax Act are not subject to either social security tax or Medicare tax on the qualified sick leave wages. Accordingly, they do not get a credit for the Medicare tax. So if you're not subject to the tax, it would make sense that you wouldn't get a credit for the tax. Overview of Paid Family Leave Refundable Credit In addition to the paid sick leave credit under the expanded FMLA, an employee who is unable to work, including telework, because of need uh, to care for a child whose school or place of care is closed or whose child care provider is unable due to COVID-19, is described in five above, is entitled to paid family and, and medical leave equal to two-thirds of the employee's regular pay up to $200 per day and $10,000 in aggregate. Up to 10 weeks of qualified leave can be counted towards the family leave credit. For more information, you can see the link here. I'll have a link to this in the description. The eligible employer is entitled to a fully refundable tax credit equal to the required paid family and medical leave uh, qualified family leave wages. 
This tax credit also includes the eligible employer's share of Medicare tax imposed on those wages and its cost of maintaining health insurance coverage for the employee during the family leave period qualified health plan expenses. The eligible employer is not subject to the employer portion of Social Security tax imposed on those wages. Eligible employers uh, subject to the Railroad Retirement Tax Act are not subject to either Social Security tax or Medicare tax on the qualified family leave wages. Accordingly, they do not get the credit uh, for Medicare tax. For more information, you can see the link here. Payment uh, of the sick and family leave credit. So payment of the sick and family leave credit. Eligible employers are entitled to receive a credit in the full amount of the qualified sick wages and qualified family leave wages plus allocable qualified health plan expenses and employer share of Medicare tax paid for leave during the period beginning April 1st, 2020 and ending December 31st, 2020. The credit is, is allowed against the taxes uh, imposed on employers by Section 3111A of the Internal Revenue Code, the Code, the Old Age Survivors and Disabilities Insurance Tax, Social Security Tax, and Section 3221A of the Code, Railroad Retirement Act, Tier 1 Rate, on all wages and compensations paid to all employees. If the amount of the credit exceeds the employer portion of these federal employment taxes, uh, then the excess is treated as an over overpayment and refunded to the employer under Section 6402A or 6413A of the code. The qualified sick leave wages and qualified family leave wages are not subject to taxes imposed on employers by Sections 311A and 3221A of the code, and employers, other than those that are subject to the Railroad Retirement Tax Act, are entitled to an additional credit for the taxes on employers imposed by Section 3111B of the Code, Hospital Insurance, Medicare Tax on such wages. Eligible employers that pay qualified leave wages will be able to retain an amount of all federal employment taxes equal to the amount of the qualified leave wages paid, plus the applicable uh, portion, health plan expenses, and the amount of the employer's share of Medicare tax imposed and those wages rather than depositing them with the IRS. The federal employment tax that are available for retention by eligible employers, including federal income taxes withheld from the employees, the employee's share of Social Security and Medicare taxes, and the employer's share of Social Security and Medicare taxes with respect to all employees. If the federal employment taxes yet to be deposited are not sufficient to cover the eligible employer's cost of qualified leave wages, plus the applicable uh, qualified health plan expenses and amount of the employer's share of medical of Medicare tax imposed on those wages, the employer will be able to file a request for an advance payment from the IRS. The IRS expects uh, to begin processing these requests April 2020. Uh, eligible employers claiming the credit for qualified leave wages plus allocable uh, qualified health plan expenses and the eligible employer share of Medicare taxes must retain records and documentations related to and supporting each employee's leave to substantiate the claim for the credits as well as retaining Form 941, Employer's Quarterly Federal Tax Return, and 7200 advance of employer credit due to COVID-19 and any other applicable filing made to the IRS requesting the credit. For more detail on the refundable tax credits and the procedures to receive payment of the advance credit, you can see the link here. Eligible employers claiming the credits for qualified leave wages plus allocable uh, qualified health plan expenses and eligible employers' share of Medicare taxes must retain records and documentation related to and supporting each employee's leave to substantiate the claim for the credits as well as retaining Form 941, Employer's Quarterly Federal Tax Return, and 7200, Advance of Employer Credits Due to COVID-19, and any other applicable filing made to the IRS requesting the credit. For more detail on the refundable tax credits and the procedures to receive uh, payment for the advance credits, you can see the link here.